Welcome, my tarot friends. Today I'm doing a video called Hashtag 21 Tarot Questions. This tag was originally created by Lisa Pappas and her wife. Um, but this is also a VR, not just to them, but also to the Dark Fae Tarot, because she was the first person whose um, video on this topic I saw. So, the first question is, what is the tag that they'll have to pry out of your cold dead hands? And that question to me is very easy. Um, there are two decks, but one is my main deck, and that is the Herb Crafters Tarot. Now, this deck is just on another level for me. Um, I feel that it is a deck that is very underrated. Mm, it is not only absolutely gorgeous, but it is also so, so deep. Um, the readings I get with this deck are just absolutely incredible. Like, um, it shows me perspectives of Tarot that before I have not seen. Oh, sorry, before I haven't seen. Um, it's very gentle, but at the same time, it's very direct and wise like it's hard to describe like um especially the guidebook is so beautifully done like um with so little words the authors managed to say so much like sometimes i would just dwell on one sentence and be like oh my gosh this could mean this and this and this and it's just so beautiful like I am a sucker for um, art, hand-painted art or hand-drawn art, and this deck is just perfect. It also reminds me of a place that I come from. Uh, I now live in a city, but I come from a village from a very foresty <laughs> type of area. So I basically grew up in a forest and in nature. So this deck helps me to connect with that part of myself helps me to connect with nature, to mother nature, and it's just, I don't know, it's my, I think this is my soul deck, to be honest with you, like, I have so many decks in my tarot family, and this one just hits a different spot than any other deck I've ever had, so, this is the first deck, and this one is never going anywhere, the next deck that goes in this category is thought taught deck um i recently trimmed mine recently being yesterday <laughs> on a christmas day i was trim trimming my um thought deck uh yes this deck is obviously very special very known i'm sure that if you're watching this you know quite a lot about thought throw i'm sorry thought deck so yeah this is a deck that i also would never want to leave my side because I don't know it's just so deep it has so many layers it uh it's just every time you look at cars you discover something else you know there is the whole I don't know religion behind it <laughs> um I know Crowley is a um what is the word it's a contradictor contradiction contradictory person personality but this deck is just, I don't know, it's everything. So if we're talking about Rider Waite Smith, the Herb Craft Estero is the one. And then I don't read Mercer, so the next one would be Thought Estero. Poem number two is um, What's your guilty pleasure deck? And my guilty pleasure deck is Tero of the Spirit. Now you say why is this a guilty pleasure deck this is like so layered and so deep and so just uh, complex i'm gonna say um and that's exactly why <laughs> it is my guilty pleasure deck um i'm a person who likes to learn who likes to explore new territories new things a lot and this deck just offers so much like i bought all the all i mean all the two books that come with it um, there is the one from the time that she created this deck. This is, by the way, by Pamela and Joyce Eakins. And it's just like, this is a deck that I would go to when I have time, like when I have me time, and then I would just study the cards. Because for every card in the book, 
or in both books you have pages and pages of symbology numerology um, relation to obviously the tree of life relation to the planets the colors everything like it, it's so layered that i don't think there's a deck out there that is as layered as this one and thought honestly i mean i know that right the rider Wright smith deck deck is also layered um and you can explore it in depth but i feel um this one and thought are even more layered and have even more theory behind it and stories and just it's just i don't know it's absolutely amazing so this is my guilty pleasure deck question number three is um what's the deck you wish existed and to be honest um i would like to see a deck that has the ocean theme i know that um you know one of the decks exists and it's really hard to deck i'm gonna get to that deck later but i want more of that i want more of uh, ocean animal themed decks tarot decks specifically um i know there are like oracle decks and stuff like i wanted to be very deep i wanted to be just very specific like like I would like a person to really research the animals and the plants even in the sea and then relate that to the meanings of the cards. I don't want just someone to be like, oh yeah, this animal looks kind of, I don't know, uh, like a trickster. So this is going to be five of swords. You know, I, I want them to really proper research the ocean, oceanic life and then create a deck for it. Not just because it's pleasing to the eye and it's beautiful, but because it actually has deep meaning behind it, just like the Herbcraft Estero. Like those plants, they all have the meaning. They're all, it's just so deep. Like you have different sorts of plants for different numbers. So it's very numerology based. Um, but then also the Herbcrafters journey through learning the about the herbs and how to craft with them and stuff so i'm not gonna go into detail because i will do a proper review of that deck soon but um yeah so in that way i would like an oceanic or ocean themed tarot deck to exist as well question number four what deck would you give to a new reader that is very simple obviously a right away smith deck which i'm not gonna put on camera but yeah and also the second one would be the light seers to row. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that everyone watching this is very. I just forgot the word. It, you know about this deck basically. So why the light seers to row? Um, because it is so obvious. Like everything about it is just so obvious. You know what it means. Obviously, she's going away from the rain and from the waves onto somewhere that is calm and nicer. Obviously, this is the sun card and she's expressing herself. She's being truly herself. You know, it's very obvious. She's the, the healer queen. Uh, she doesn't know where to go. Uh, she's trying to choose. There's like two parts here. And she had to go deep in deep within herself to choose. Uh, Knight of Wands, very obvious. Um, Ten of Cups. And also, not just because it's very easy to read... Um, you can use intuition beautifully and it goes with Rider Waite Smith symbology amazingly. Um, but also because it is diverse, it is modern, it is very relatable. And um, I this is my main deck to re when I'm reading for other people and everyone loves it. So yes, this is the deck that I would give someone who is just starting. This one and Rider Waite Smith. And then they can study them together. Um, yeah, so that was question number four. Also, the book is amazing. That's another thing. Question number five. What deck do you want to get along with, but it just never clicked? There are two decks, actually. One is the Patch Tarot, and one is the Modern Witch Tarot. This was actually one of my first decks, and I got it because it's like a proper Rider Waite Smith um, clone. But I just like, I used used it to study it. So I was writing notes using this deck. But I just, I don't know, I just can't. Like, there's something about the uh, the cardstock. It's just so annoying. It's like plastic. It's hard. It's thick. I don't know. I mean, you can shuffle it like that. But it's just, I, don't, I just can't. And to me, like, I know Light Sears Tarot is modern. And this is also modern. 
but it's just I don't know it's the art style is too cartoonish for me I suppose there's no depth in the pictures it's very 2d like art and I don't know I think I'm gonna give this deck away very soon yeah this is a deck I just I just can't connect with no matter how hard I try it is a good deck to study like when you're learning about um, Rider Waite Smith but I don't know I just can't I cannot connect with it and then the next one is the patch to row this is from spirit science um from the spirit and si sorry spirit science youtube channel um and this deck is very interesting actually um you can see i even edged it and everything um i was very excited it's very interesting it has extra i think four cards they're here at the end um sorry i think it's this way um or even more than four but yeah it's like it's very you know like their channel basically the the art style is like their channel which is not my favorite but it is very expressive like there's symbolism like they studied thought and right away smith and um marseille and they put all of it together and numerology and everything goes with row. like there's a lot of work that was put in this deck but it's just like what they did was oh, why is this turn around what they did was they um basically the major arcana they started with the full as number one and magician number two etc and at that time when i was researching this I was like yeah this makes perfect sense and then the more i studied numerology i realized it doesn't make perfect sense <laughs> so then because of that um i don't ever use it you know i just don't use it um i just can't use it the backs are really cool as well um it's obviously very kabbalistic you know um but yeah this is another deck that i just can't get along with number six uh which deck do you only keep for the art and that is an oracle deck actually flower medicine oracle deck this deck is an indie deck and it's yeah, i got it on etsy it's absolutely beautiful like absolutely beautiful but even though I really want to use it, I just can't because it only has like one, well, two words on the on the actual cards. Um, so the name of the flower and then association to it. So daisy and you have innocence. Um, and even though it is very accurate, I just, I don't know. I am a sucker for a guidebook and this one doesn't come with a guidebook. And I just can't work with an uh, oracle deck without a guidebook. I don't know. It's because like I can't really use my intuition apart from yeah this is the you know creativity right orange color is the the sacred chakra so it's creativity yeah cool but that's kind of the only thing I can go for is the knowledge about the chakras and the colors um, I don't know but I just can't use this deck intuitively even though it is gorgeous like it's so beautiful because um, like I said I'm a sucker for art like a uh, hand painting hand painted decks. I love hand-painted decks and uh, yeah it is gorgeous if you like it you can get it on Etsy um, but yeah I keep this one just because art is beautiful question number seven uh, which deck did you get just because everyone else did it's two decks and that is oak ash and thorn and the thistle down oracle um, these are absolutely gorgeous and like i said before i am a nature girl i'm a farm girl i'm a girl from from the forest i used to call myself druid um <laughs> when i was younger and i'm very happy i got these decks even though they are indie decks so they come they are a little bit more expensive but they're still affordable and they're just absolutely gorgeous beautiful art very rider weight smith you can use your intuition like the the or author actually encourages you to use intuition reading these cards although you can get the pdf version of the guidebook which is which is very um very basic i'm gonna say it's nice but very basic you know nothing new if you know notaro there's not gonna be anything new there for you but yeah it is absolutely beautiful like look at that how gorgeous is that oh my god um 
and same goes for wait let me just put this away same goes for the thistle down oracle they both come with like cheating sheets as well which is kind of cool um this one is like it doesn't have borders which i really like and it's just absolutely gorgeous again and once again this is a um it has a keyword retreat but you know like if i compare it to the flower uh, oracle before that I was talking about the flower medicine oracle this can be read so easily intuitively like um because there's like things happening in the cards there is like a situation that you can read into was there is just have like this beautiful flower and that's it um so this deck is absolutely beautiful it is gentle but also directed at the same time it just reminds me of my childhood it is just some a deck that is going to stay with me forever and i love that it's never going to go well that's what the art not artist well artist and author no no not artist sorry the author she said that it's never gonna, never gonna be mass mass market deck because it's not sustainable if you do that so i love that i have this and i'm very glad that i listened to the hype <laughs> of people buying it because it's absolutely gorgeous well both of them are question number eight um which tarot deck is over your head well not tarot which deck is over your head or just baffles you and that would be which sister tarot i'm gonna put it here because i don't have it um this is a deck that is very hyped right now i feel it was very anticipated um in tarot community and personally i just don't get it like it doesn't do anything for me and i love you know Celt celtish not celtic celtic <laughs> celtic um irish scottish type of decks i do i love them but this one just doesn't do anything for me i just see it as portraits of you know these deities and that's it and it just doesn't like i would have to learn and study every picture and remember the name of the deity of a person on the deck and what it represents to be able to connect to the meaning and it's just no way but hey whoever loves it good for you question number nine what deck surprised you what deck surprised me i have two decks i have the tarot of the she and i have the soul flower plant spirit oracle and i'm going to talk about this one first um this one surprised me not just because i knew it's going to be gorgeous this is the deck that i got because it's very similarly beautiful to the other flower um what is it called the flower medicine oracle deck it's very similar in a way where it's watercolors it's just absolutely gorgeous but then not only you get the name of the plant the keyword and then a little blurb about about the meaning of the card which is great i love that because not too big um but also the guidebook is so good like it's healing it's so good like it made me cry on many occasions that's how good it is it just touches you in this way it's like the wisdom in this um guidebook is on another level it's like i was shocked i did not expect this i just got it because i heard that people loved it and it's beautiful and it's plants which i love and then bam the depth of this deck so this is my main working oracle deck now like i literally use it every day every day and i pair it with everything because most of my deck are um painted so they go with this deck goes with basically all my decks uh tarot decks so yeah this one surprised me hardcore another deck that surprised me is tarot of the she um i was not sure if i should get this deck or not um but i'm so happy i did because wow it is so beautiful um and intuitive and just yeah just amazing like um it's yeah it's its own thing it's really hard to describe it uh with words it's really easy to read like if you know um if you know right away smith if you know numerology if you know um you know all this metaphysical stuff behind to row this one is just whoa um it's very direct as well i feel and honest and just it may it makes me connected to 
the um, the fairy world or of the she world you know the they can be seen as fairies or as extraterrestrials um, but yeah it's just wow it's just one of them decks that I'm just in awe of and I'm so so happy I got it because I really again I wasn't sure just because everyone is getting it and I was like oh my god this deck blah blah and I was like okay it looks cool you know I love 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 art um, like decks that have like this type of uh, kind of like abstract art you know so yeah this is the tarot of the she and is one of my favorite decks now <laughs> and I'm so happy I got it super surprise number 10 uh what deck doesn't really work for you but you keep it because it's a collectible well this is the green wheel oracle um not that i don't like it i do i think it's beautiful the artist is the same artist um daniel B daniel barlow um she's the same artist as um the witch's wisdom tarot and this deck is just once again absolutely gorgeous um but i don't know it's just maybe it's the cardstock it's very papery it's like a feels like oh my gosh it's done the wrong way feels like a little bit like it's a canvas i mean it's it is nice don't get me wrong no it's probably not that um i don't know why i just don't use it even though it's absolutely gorgeous and i got it literally i was i had it in my chart for a very long time you can get this on etsy i'm not sure if you can still get it and then she wrote um on facebook that she's not gonna print another edition for a while at least or ever she doesn't know if ever or for a while because it costs a lot of money to print it and um i was like you know what i feel this is the universe telling me to actually get it because i had it in my chart for a very long time and it's absolutely beautiful and i would use this deck more for you know to put it on the altar for the energies of the um the wheel of the year if that makes sense um but yeah i don't know it's so beautiful but uh, i just don't work with it like an oracle it's more for the display the display of art and yeah it's absolutely beautiful gore just. question number 11 what is your favorite gilded deck um i have a few that i like and one of them is because i love this deck um the starter row it's the gilding is not the best i'm not gonna lie but i just love this deck and it's gilded so it's it's gotta be one of my favorite gilded decks there <laughs> you know um starter row is just the star sorry tarot is just very deep it has so much symbology that you can work with one card for hours literally um i did a whole review on this deck so feel free to check it out yeah so one of them is the star to row then the next one is seasons of the witch and it is the Beltine, sorry, Beltine Oracle. I forgot for a second. And this gilding is just so pretty. Like, it's very nice. It's gold as well, but it's just so pretty. I don't know. It just. And I like the cardstock. It's very nice. Um, and I love this deck as well. It's very direct. It's very creative. It's for manifestation, which is something that I love. You know, because we're such powerful divine beings and we can manifest and do create whatever we believe in. So this deck is, yeah, it's one of my favorite Gilded decks as well. And then of course, of course, the Mary Altero, like it's the second edition. It is, it has silver gilding and it's also one of my favorite decks out there. It's just so beautiful and deep and layered and special and different and artsy. I'm going to say artsy. I mean, I know all throw decks are artsy because it's art, really. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? So yeah, Mary L. Thoreau. The Mary L. Thoreau, sorry. Question number 12. Which deck do you love but hate the cardstock? And that is very, very simple. It is the Witch's Wisdom Thoreau. I mean, this deck is... Woof, 
I love this deck so much. I mean, oh, it's just beautiful but deep. It is going back to Mother Earth, you know, it's connecting to the Mother Earth and to the Divine. It's not trying to ascend out in the universe but co coming back to the Earth plane. It's, it's just so, so gorgeous. So that's the same artist as, as the Green Wheel Oracle. Um, but the cardstock, oh my god, not only is huge, like look how thick this is, but it's like, it's like the size of an oracle really. But then you, you, like, you can kind of shuffle it this way, but even this way, it's a little bit sticky, if you know what I mean, like it's matte and it's kind of sticky and it's just, it's just, it's kind of hard to shuffle. Like no way you could, um, you could shuffle it this way, no way. I mean, I, I can't. Not that I would want to, but I just look, it's, it's so hard, I just can't do it. I have, my hands are way too small, I just can't do it. And this is a deal breaker for a lot of people. And then there was this hype that the new version is coming out, um, a smaller version. And I was waiting, because I was like, okay, if there's a smaller version, I'm gonna wait for someone to buy, do a review, and then if it's actually smaller, I'm gonna get it. Guess what? All they did was they changed the box, and the box is smaller, and there is a guidebook that is smaller, but guess what? The cardstock and the cards are the same. So I'm like, why would you do that? Like, why? And I know it's not Phyllis's fault, it's the Hay House. So hey, Hay House, if you're watching this, please make this deck, if not smaller, just thinner cards, like, so we can shuffle it properly. Ugh, yeah. Really frustrating because I love this deck on so many levels. But yeah, this is the deck that I love. I absolutely adore. But the card stock just crosses me. Number 13. What, sorry, which deck or what deck gives you the willies? I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it wrong. But yeah, creepy feeling, I suppose. Um, and that is, I don't have it. But the name of this deck is Cursed Aguri's Tarot deck. I'm going to show you the picture here. So this is just, oh my god, I just saw it online and it is creepy. If you have that fear of holes and circles being together and spiders and oh my god, it's just, I'm going to say it is not for me. <laughs> not for me at all. Question number 14. Um, what's your favorite deck for shadow work? And I have basically two decks for, well, three really for shadow work. Um, one is going to have to be the Mary L. Mary L. Mary L. Tarot. I'm not sure why I had a problem saying her name right there. I mean, its name right there. Yeah, it's a, it has that um, shadowy energy to it. Um, and it's very direct and it tells you how it is. And it helps you explore the depths of your subconscious. Um, probably also because of the way that the guidebook is written. Although the art itself um, does that as well. And yeah, I know that many people use this deck for shadow work. Um, what I'm saying, working with shadow work is for myself. I would use this deck. Um, but then also, funnily enough, um, the enchanted forest tarot or is it forest of enchantment i never know um and yeah this deck might f seem like it is very oh it's very fairies and forest creatures and it's very cute but no look at that no it's not cute it is uh it is very straight to the point and it hits you you know um and you need that sometimes with shadow work like you need to discover things that you don't want to see or you're pretending you can't see or they're just deep deep within you and you're going into this you know um dark forest and you meet yourself there you know it's um yeah this is for me also very sh shadowy type of deck but then there is one more deck for that that i think is really good and that is, you guessed it, the Wildwood Tarot. I mean, yeah. The Wildwood Tarot is also one of the decks that I feel is really good for shadow work from very similar reasons that the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. Um, although this one is a bit more pagany, right? That one is more fairies, fairy world 
like and this one is more pagany world like but yeah it is amazing i love this deck so much as well it is so beautiful yes it has its own system but you know you can work with it in so many different ways and definitely a deck that could be used and is used in you know in my practice for shadow work as well as other things as well it's not just shadow work but yeah um so question what? number 15 is what deck do you love in theory but not in practice and that is the mermaid tarot which is very interesting because look at that i gilded it in such beautiful blue blue turquoise turquoise color i mean this deck is just so beautiful it is so gorgeous when i saw the art i was in awe i was like whoa this is my my soul deck this is something that I, I don't need any other deck when i got this deck well before i got it but when i was looking at it i said to myself this is like perfect art it's colorful it's a water team i love water um it's just oh so amazing and it is amazing but for some reason i don't know i just i just can't work with it i, I tried i tried and just i don't know I just can't do it like this doesn't give me anything what is this a sword lying on the bottom of the ship that is sunk and how is this supposed to be some new thought something new coming into your head like you know it's just a sword that it's on the bottom of the ocean like it doesn't do anything to me i don't know it's really weird because um i love the other deck that she created now i forgot what lisa robertson i love her other deck that she created which right now i just can't remember i will write it here i love the other deck i forgot the name um but this one oh i think it's the uh animal totem isn't it i think it's the animal to yes it is the animal totem tarot i love that deck um but this one i don't know i just can't question number 16 is what deck would you never use to read for somebody else and that is very simple the herb craft the Starot, which i talked about before to start with and the mary l tarot these are m my decks like i use them just for myself i don't know i just can't use it for other people it's really interesting but yeah it's a thing and i'm sure if you are a tarot reader you understand this um yeah so these are the two decks that i just use for myself question number 17 is what deck would you never use for yourself now personally if i own a deck then i need to be able to use it for myself as well but that said the deck that i use ma mainly or just for just for the people really is the light series to row. um and that is because people just love it so much and because i love working with as many decks as possible i use this for the people and i then don't use it for myself so that's that question number 18 is what deck could you not bring yourself to buy and there are a few decks actually um one of them is the chematic to row. i'm gonna put pictures of them here so the chematic tarot veil of a set edition and then the rosetta tarot and uh, tabula mundi tarot or tabula i'm not sure how to pronounce it how to pronounce this and why it's basically because they are just very expensive you know um i said to myself i'm not gonna buy decks um that are over 60 pounds and they are over 60 pounds when when, no, when you consider shipping and everything so i might ask people who love me <laughs> to get one of them for me for like my birthday and then we come to question number 19 and that is what what's your favorite pip deck and my favorite pip deck apart from obviously taught the row is the vision quest row and oh man this deck is so gorgeous it's just so beautiful and the little white guidebook that comes with it it's written in such beautiful way like i was shocked but yeah this is a pip deck that is my favorite pip deck 
Um, and I don't have many pip decks. I think it's just this one and Tots that I have. Maybe there's one more that I can't remember right now. But um, yeah, I just love this deck. It's one of my favorite decks of all time as well. So it's very intuitive, but also if you know Tot or if you know numerology and stuff, it is um, a really good reader. And yeah, it's just so beautiful. Two of Swords in this deck, there we go, is like my favorite Two of Swords of all time. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Question number 20 <laughs> is what deck slaps you with the truth? And the deck that slaps me with the truth is the Animal Totem Tarot. It's um, very interesting. And because, uh, I would say mainly because of the guidebook, I feel this, this uh, tarot deck you can read it intuitively, um, definitely, because you do have situations on the cards. Um, and if you know right away it's myth, it's even easier. But the guidebook is just so direct. And yeah, it just slaps you with the truth, literally. Um, and look, look at that one. Oh my gosh. And um, I love the fact that what she did here was she broke it down for this different aspects. So if you're asking a question about your job or if you're asking a question about your relationship or your health, um, she wrote all the meanings there, which I really like. So yeah, this deck is definitely the one that slaps with the truth. And also Mary L. Um, but yeah, I love this deck for that. This is definitely a deck that slaps you in the face with the truth. <laughs> And the last but not least question is question 21. And question 21 is, what's the deck that got away? Um, and there are a few actually that got away. I'm quite upset about this because I really like them. One is the Blood Moon Tarot. And the other is, the, is an oracle and is Earth, Moon and Shadow Oracle. I think it's funny that they both have the word moon inside of their titles and they got both got away <laughs> but yeah um these are the two the two um decks that got away so yes um thank you so much for joining me today um in this walkthrough of this 21 questions about my tarot practice or just about tarot um and i hope to see you again soon bye bye